The tomatoes are looking beautiful. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly what and how we feed our tomatoes. Welcome back to Wishwell Farms, I'm Jason. So a couple years ago, I made a video about how we take care of our plants and all the weekly jobs that go into maintaining greenhouse tomatoes. And I got a lot of questions from people all around the world what are we feeding our tomatoes and how do we do it? How much? So in this video, I'm going to explain the exact recipe that we are feeding our tomatoes and how we mix that up and how we deliver it to the plants. So let's get started. All right, before we dive in, just a quick overview of our operation. We raise about 75 acres of vegetables outdoors. We have about 14,000 square feet of greenhouse space for raising hydroponic tomatoes. We've been raising them for over 20 years. so. We got a little bit of experience, but I definitely don't know it all. I mean, learn something new every year. All right, let's dive in and take a closer look at exactly what I'm feeding our tomatoes. First, let me explain our four different nutrient tanks here. This one over here is our sulfuric acid tank. All this is is to help bring the pH of our water down to about a 5.5 to 5.8. If we didn't inject acid into our mixing tank, our water would be 7.7 .7 approximately coming out of the well. Tomato plants like a low pH, so there would be a lot of nutrients that would not be available to the plants if we did not acidify our water. This tank here is gonna have four different fertilizers mixed into it as well as a micronutrient mix. And this tank has two different fertilizers that are gonna be mixed into it. And the reason they're kept separate is if they were all mixed they would form a precipitate. There would be chunks and globs of fertilizers sticking together. So they have to be kept separate in high concentrations. Once they're put into the mixing tank, it's okay for them to be combined because there's a lot of water in there mixed with it. So you can see it running right now, actually. This is a bellow pump proportioner. It's drawing fertilizer and nutrients out of each tank, as well as the sulfuric acid tank. This is sulfuric acid. This is tank number two, the clear one, and the one that's orange, you know, from iron. We call that tank number one. So fresh well water is getting circulated and filled into the tank as the bellow pumps bring the fertilizer in. It's all getting mixed up and it is currently being pumped out of the tank through this pump here. It goes through a filter system and then there are four different solenoid valves here. Each one represents one greenhouse. We have four greenhouses that this nutrient supply is feeding. It's all run by a computer system. Each one of these represents a greenhouse. And here is the grower's choice computer system that we use. Uh, there are much newer versions that are usually used now by most growers. This one was popular in the 90s and early 2000s and it's been working for me, so why upgrade? They cost like $3,000. All right, now let's actually get the fertilizers out weigh them out and get them dumped into each specific tank and I'll show you exactly what we're using and how we mix the fertilizers. Here are all of our fertilizers for one season. We haven't yet got our sulfur of potash delivered, but there's enough there to get me through half the season, so we're fine. So yeah, there's our different nutrients. We're gonna get each one out individually, weigh it, and mix it in hot water to get it dissolved well. And of course, here we have our boxes of sulfuric acid that you can pick up at just about any auto parts store. This here is our tomato recipe that we will be following. And this comes from a company called Crop King in Lodi, Ohio. And I sent them a water sample of our well water. And based off of that, they developed a recipe for the types or hybrids of tomatoes that I am growing. So we'll look at this a little bit closer as we weigh out our fertilizers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fill the tanks with Oh, about 15 gallons of hot water. So there's my water heater. Over here I have a bypass valve where the hot water comes up to mix with the cold well water because we like to temper our water to around 70 degrees. That way we don't shock our plant roots. So I'm gonna shut that off so we can't put the hot water into the blue tank. Shut off the cold. And now the hot water is the only one it's on. Fertilizers can mix without hot water, but this just makes the process go easier and quicker. So let's get about 15 gallons of hot water in each of these tanks. 
I mix all my fertilizers in this blue bucket and we got a scale here. We got calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate, monopotassium phosphate, Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate, and sulfur of potash, also known as potassium sulfate. And then we also have a pretty small amount of this, but we gotta have iron in our mix. And then finally, the last thing is our micro mix, which is in liquid form. It's all the micronutrients already pre-mixed. I keep it in this five gallon jug. All right, if you look closely here, we have a normal and a boosted. Today we are using the boosted. We move to that program, that recipe, once we have a second cluster of fruit on the tomatoes. And we do. The first cluster is almost golf ball size, the second cluster is pea to marble size, and the third cluster is actually flowering right now. So, first nutrient we're gonna mix is calcium nitrate. Oh, ran out in that bag, gotta open another bag. Since this scale doesn't measure ounces, we're just gonna make it 31. Point four. Hopefully that's focusing in for you. 31, oh, pulling some weight off the bucket with the cord. 31.4 pounds. Dump it right into the tank. Give it a little tap, make sure it's all out. Clean. And I just use this, uh, I don't know if this is a paint or a drywall mixer, but it works great for mixing fertilizer. Once we get this mixed up fairly well, I'll turn the regular well water spigot back on and start filling this tank up to 50 gallons. Next, in tank one, I forgot to show you that, we're doing concentrate tank one which is just these three items. Seven, almost seven and a half. We're gonna call it 7.4 pounds of potassium nitrate. The final ingredient to concentrate tank one is iron, 7.25 ounces. This scale does not measure ounces, so I've used another scale in the past, and it just made a mark on this container to what 7.25 ounces of iron is. Here we go. This stuff really makes the water turn kind of a rusty orange color. All right, we just gotta get this tank filled up to 50 gallons with fresh water, mix it one more time, and then we're ready to work on tank number two. Tank one is mixed and full and ready to go. These are the four nutrients I'm gonna get weighed out and dumped into tank two. Concentration tank number two. I'll show you what we're mixing here. And I forgot to correct this. I just printed this off today. I forgot this was a mistake when they sent it to me back in 2017. So. On the boosted program, we're going to do 7 pounds, 4 ounces of magnesium sulfate, 22 pounds, 11 ounces of potassium sulfate, 7.6 potassium nitrate, 9 pounds, and 2.5 ounces of monopotassium phosphate, and 1 gallon of the micronutrient mix. So I forgot to show you, our micro mix comes pre-mixed to be mixed into a five gallon jug of water with our water sample on there or our recipe. So we need one gallon of the micro mix in tank two. So a half gallon and a second half gallon. Oh. All right, there's one gallon 
in tank two. Let's get her mixed up and finished up. All right, let's give her one final good mix here to make sure everything is dissolved well. Mixed up and ready to go. I thought I'd give you a quick look at these uh, suction tubes that go down in each tank. They have a little uh, screen mesh uh, thing on the end to keep from sucking up chunks, which would quickly and easily plug these uh, little diaphragms in these billow pumps. When that happens, you lose suction and nothing will come out in the mixing tank. You know, every few weeks I'll have to clean those out. Uh, another thing I do each week after I mix the fertilizer up is clean this disc filter in here. This one uh, filters any junk that may have gotten into the blue mixing tank, and this one filters any rust or sediment that may come out of the well before it goes into the fill tank. One question I often get about our uh, nutrient solution is, do we have a reservoir tank? No, we do not. We uh, feed directly from our well water into one central mixing tank that's only 50 gallons. A reservoir tank might be nice because you could mix weeks and weeks of fertilizer solution in one shot instead of having to come out here and mix weekly. It, uh, it gets to be quite a chore, especially during the summer when we're busy doing other things. And then another question I often get is do we recirculate our nutrient solution? After we feed our plants, it leaches out into a catch tube and just drains outside into our fields. It is possible to recirculate that and reuse it. I don't know enough about that to be able to incorporate that in our operation. So we currently are not recirculating or capturing our leach, which is the used up fertilizer after the plants have taken the nutrients it needs out of the feed solution. So we just let ours run out in the field and it just fertilizes our soil in that area a little bit. So it's really no big deal. It's mainly just water. So hopefully that answers those questions for those of you who have been asking in the past. All right, all the tanks are fully mixed and filled with 50 gallons of nutrients, ready to go for another week. This is a weekly process I have to go through to feed our four greenhouses. Now, some of you may be wondering why I didn't fill the acid tank. There's still about uh, 15 gallons in there, so it can wait a couple days. Now, don't take my numbers and think that they're gonna work perfectly for your greenhouse. Everybody has a different water analysis. In a perfect world, I would have reverse osmosis water in here with nothing in my water and I would be able to better properly feed my tomatoes exactly what they need for optimal performance and growth. But since I don't have reverse osmosis, I rely on my well water and everybody's gonna have a different well water analysis to base their recipe on. So please keep that in mind if you are trying to find a recipe to feed your greenhouse tomatoes. And when it comes to acid, everybody has a different titration curve. Don't ask me to explain what titration curve is, because I can't, but for me, I use a half gallon of sulfuric acid that comes from the auto parts store in a box per 10 gallons of my well water. And that brings my pH down to 5.5 where I want it. Alrighty folks, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know this video wasn't for everybody, but if you're into gardening and growing tomatoes or into hydroponics, hopefully you learned something today. And if you have any other questions or maybe video ideas you'd like to see about our tomatoes, our greenhouses, or hydroponics, or just farming in general, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer those and possibly do a video off of those ideas. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again down on the farm real soon.